So here we are, Moroni is now talking about a very similar thing. Because look right here, verse 18, we're jumping right in the middle of it. And he says, show unto me, or ye, Lord's people, shall be smitten. So prove it. So this show, show unto me means prove it. Prove unto me what you're telling me. And if not, I will smite you. And so he says, well, beware for those of you that are like this. Beware those that judge rashly too quickly without putting forth uh, what, what you should be doing to realize, is this of God or is it not? So Moroni is is unfolding a little bit more of the same kind of scenario that Nephi told us about. And we, we already know, first of all, a few things. As we're looking at this scenario, we already know that um, in third Nephi, Mormon tries to tell us that there is greater truth to be had. So, I'm going to just pull it up real here real quick. We're going to take a quick look at that. This is chapter 26 of 3rd Nephi. We just need to look at a couple of uh, contexts. We know that the sealed portion is coming forth and that a lot of was in the sealed portion is what Brother Jared saw in vision, which was basically the end from the beginning. Uh, so but everything. And he wasn't the only one that saw it, but uh, that's when it was written down as part of the gold plates. So Moroni felt inspired, but then God said, okay, you wrote it down, great. Now seal it up because it is not going to come forth until the end. So here's chapter 26. And we're start here in verse six and Mormon says, okay, there can't be written in this book even a hundredth part of the things which Jesus did truly teach the people. So again, what we talked about at the beginning of this very lesson, but behold, the plates of Nephi do contain the more part. So now, so, now, right there, we see less versus more, uh, like quantity of information. So that's one uh, category. But now let's look past that. And these things which I have written, which are a lesser part of the things that he taught the people, I've written them to the intent that they may be brought again to this people from the Gentiles. From the Gentiles, meaning the Gentiles that have the gospel. So Gentiles, meaning members of the church. And when they have received this, which is expedient that they should have first to try their faith, and if it so be they shall believe these things, then shall the greater things be made manifest unto them. And if it so be that they will not believe these things, then shall the greater things be withheld. So consider that even though just in, the, in verse 6, he's talking about quantity, he couldn't give us all the quantity of everything that was in the record. Think of this as lesser knowledge versus greater knowledge so not necessarily quantity but quality think think of that when you're looking at these verses not quantity of information as much as quality and what do i mean by that well dr covenant section 88 talks about this idea of truth be existing in the sphere which is placed celestial terrestrial celestial a lot of what we have in our understanding is telestial level knowledge and t or we might have some terrestrial level truths or even celestial level truths presented to us in certain parts throughout scripture, but it's hidden from our understanding because we only have a celestial level understanding. So this idea of greater things being hid from us has a lot to do with our own spiritual preparation and spiritual level of ascension. Okay. That's really important to understand as we are considering these messages like Mormon chapter eight that we're looking at. Because verse 18, show unto me, prove me what you're saying. You're showing me something terrestrial or celestial. I don't understand it because I already have the restored gospel. I already have my celestial understanding, but I believe I'm so wise, like we looked at in those scriptures. I already believe I'm wise spiritually. I don't need anything more. I don't need God's counsel. I don't need more truth. It's all right here. The warnings are right here. And look at, look at, this is, ye shall be smitten. That's just cute scripture language, right? No, that's violence. This is violence. And this is the Lord's people speaking to the Lord's own people. And that's where we get, uh, he says, hey, don't smite. Don't do that. Don't have violence. That's where we get to verse 21. 
and he that shall breathe out wrath and strifes, that connects directly to the second Nephi 28, where it says, The kingdom of the devil must shake, and they which belong to it must needs be stirred up under repentance, or or they will anger against that which is good and they'll perish. This verse is showing us the same thing. He that belongs to the church that shall breathe out wrath and strifes against the work of the Lord. At this end time scenario, the Lord is going to start performing a work. He's going to bring forth greater and higher truths, and people are not going to be ready and awake enough to understand them, let alone accept them. And then that's why this next phrase is so important. And against the covenant people. That helps shine a little bit more light of what we were just looking at here at verse 18. Show unto me, brother so-and-so, or ye shall be smitten. We're talking violence between the Lord's own people. Which, if we understand the historical record from the beginning of time until now, we have the sobering fact that we have to come to realize that when, when men of God are slain, it almost always has been at the hand of the Lord's own people. And we have to understand that we are coming into a time like that again. And I hate to uh, bear such heavy news, but it's right here in front of us. And we have to be prepared. We have to be the covenant people of the Lord. And yes, that means our own brothers and sisters will rail against us. But we have to be the covenant people. And that's the message that I said we will be giving, diving more into as these lectures go on because that's the most important thing. It's like, why aren't we diving into it right now? Well, because we want to make sure we wake up. We can't dive into something that's important if we're asleep. We can't dive into something that's important if we are sitting here in this celestial sphere of understanding and celestial sphere uh, of knowledge refusing to accept that our paradigm might have to shift a lot because God's going to give us greater things, but we have to, we have to be ready for that. So I can't stress it enough um, that even though we're only looking at a handful of scriptures in second Nephi 28, and we looked at a few others relative to its meaning. And here we are looking at Mormon eight with a few other scriptures outside to it relative to its meaning. We're only looking at a few scriptures and we're trying to dive deep so that we can get some important pieces of information that will help us wake up and help us prepare. Because look at this. The second half of verse 21. This is the words of the Lord's own people. We will destroy the work of the Lord, and the Lord will not remember his covenant which he hath made in the house of Israel. The same is in danger to be hewn down and cast into the fire. Okay. Well, first of all, let us... Um, look at the superficial context but if we stay at the superficial context those people who will literally think those words then we're not going to get very far because we won't see ourselves ever thinking those words and we won't even see our brothers and sisters ever really thinking those words because he's speaking to active members of the church just like the parable of the ten virgins it's about the active members of the church it's about the people who he knows are reading these words we have so that we make sure we're applying it to the right set of people. So now we have to say, okay, then what is underneath this phrase? We will destroy the work of the Lord. Well, okay, even if they're not thinking that thought in their hearts, um, they will be obstructing the work of the Lord by doing exactly what we just read in the previous few verses, for example, or insert what you can get your mind to start thinking of as examples. Because that's, that's the important thing. Is like, okay, well, what are some examples or ideas that you can imagine equates to destroying the work of the Lord? And you'll and saying, the Lord will not remember his covenant which he's made in the house of Israel. So one is like not being a part of it, not being a part of that covenant, because he just barely said against the covenant people of the Lord who are the house of Israel. Uh, and we need to be part of that people. But... A sobering reality is to recognize that these um, words in the entire Book of Mormon call us Gentiles, not the house of Israel. And we need to come forth and become the covenant people of the Lord 
and and as a hint to what where we will be taking this is in second nephi 28 again when we looked really briefly oh where to go 